welcome to wings of fire dreams today we are going to study about periyar e v ramasamy the contents are taken from 12th standard book we will see the year wise achievements of e v r so starting with 1879 erod venkatas ramasamy was born on 17 september 1879 to a merchant family in erod then a part of the Coimbatore district of the Madras presidency ramaswami's father was venkatappa nayakar and his mother was chinnathai 1885 at the age of 6 he was sent to a small primary school 1889 at the age of 10 his school career ended within 5 years 1891 at the age of 12 he entered his father's trade 1898 at the age of 19 evr married nagammai who was 13 at that time they had a daughter who lived only for 5 months 1904 in 1904 ramasami went on a pilgrimage to kashi to visit the revered shiva temple of kashi vishwanath ramasami was the taste until his visit to kashi after which his views changed and he became an atheist 1918 he held the chairmanship of erod municipality in 1918 and wholeheartedly undertook constructive programs spreading the use of khadi picketing toddy shops boycotting shop selling foreign clothes and eradicating untouchability he even instructed his mother of age 80 to wear khadi While Periyar was the chairman of Erode Municipality, friendship blossomed between himself and Mr. C. Rajaji, who later became Governor General of India. 1919, Mr. P. Varadarajaru Naidu and Mr. C. Rajagopalacharya persuaded Periyar to join the National Congress Party led by Mr. M. K. Gandhi, resigning the chairmanship of Erode Municipality. Periyar joined the Congress Party 1920 he ardently participated in the non cooperation movement launched against the british rule by mahatma gandhi 1921 in 1921 ramasami cut down more than 500 coconut trees in his own farm during anti liquor campaign 1921 in 1921 ramasami quoted imprisonment for picketing toddy shops in erode when his wife as well as his sister kannamal joined agitation it gained momentum and administration was forced to come to a compromise 1922 in 1922 ramasami was elected the president of madras presidents e congress committee during the tirupur session where he advocated strongly for reservation in government jobs and education 1923 In the Kakinada meet of the Congress party in 1923 T K Madhavan presented a report citing the discrimination faced by the depressed caste in Kerala that session decided to promote movements against untouchability 1924 in Vaikam a small town in Kerala state then Trivancore there were strict laws of untouchability in and around the temple area anti caste feelings were growing and in 1924 vaikum was chosen as a suitable place for an organized satyagraha under his guidance a movement had already begun with the aim of giving all castes the right to enter the temples thus agitations and demonstrations took place on 14 april ramasami and his wife nagamma arrived in vaikum they were immediately arrested and imprisoned for participation in june 1925 the ban on the roads around the temple in vaikum was lifted in a place called cheran mahadevi tinalveli district a residential school also known as gurukulam was started and managed by vs ayer in cheran mahadevi gurukulam periyar found that brahmin children and non brahmin children were given food in separate places he advised ayer to treat children alike periyar addressed public meetings about it and created public awareness of what was happening in gurukulam periyar also raised this point in the state congress meeting 
At last, the school was closed. 1925. Periyar made the last and sixth attempt at getting the Tamil Nadu Congress to pass the resolution regarding communal representation at a conference held in Kanchipuram in 1925. Thirubika was the president at the time and sensing opposition in the open session, he did not permit Periyar to propose the resolution. In utter disgust, Periyar left the Congress. 1925. After quitting the Congress, Periyar started the Self-Respect Movement in 1925. The aims of the Self-Respect Movement were to uplift the Dravidians and to expose the Brahminical trainee. A Tamil weekly, Kudiyarasu, was started by him on May 2, 1925. In the Kudiyarasu, Ramasamy explained that, with all his good qualities, Gandhi did not bring the people forward from foolish and evil ways. His murderer was an educated man. Therefore, nobody can say this is a time of high culture. If you eat poison, you will die. If electricity hits the body, you will die. If you oppose the Brahmin, you will die. Gandhi did not advocate the eradication of Varnashrama Dharma structure. 1927 In 1927, Ramasamy and Gandhi met at Bangalore to discuss this matter. The main difference between them came out. When Ramasamy stood for the total eradication of Hinduism, to which Gandhi objected saying that Hinduism is not fixed in doctrines but can be changed. 1928 The journal Revolt started in 7-11-1928 carried on the propaganda of self-respect among the English educated people. In 1929, Ramasamy announced the decision of his caste title Naikar from his name at the first province. Provincial Self-Respect Conference of Changalpattu, 1929-1930. Ramasamy toured Malaya for the month from December 1929 to January 1930. To propagate self-respect philosophy, Ramasamy was received by 50,000 Tamil Malaysians in Penang. During the same month, he inaugurated the Tamils Conference convened by the Tamils Reformatory Sangam in Ipo. and then went to Singapore. 1930 In 1930, Periyar published his book on family planning and propagated restriction of number of children. Why I am an Atheist is an essay written by Indian revolutionary Bhagat Singh in 1930 in Lahore. On the request of Periyar E. V. Ramasamy, P. Jeevanandam translated the essay to the Tamil language. When B. Munusami Naidu became the Chief Minister of Madras Presidency in 1930, he endorsed the inclusion of Brahmins in Justice Party. Ramasamy, who was then an observ- observer in the Justice Party, criticized Munusami Naidu saying, At a time when non-Brahmins in other parties were gradually coming over to the Justice Party, being fed up with the Brahmins' method and way of dealing with political questions, it was nothing sort of folly to think of admitting him into the ranks of the Justice Party. This factionism continued until 1932, when Munusami Naidu stepped down as the Chief Minister of Madras and the Raja of Bobili became the Chief Minister. 1931 In December 1931, he undertook a tour of Europe, accompanied by S. Ramanathan and E. Rod Ramu, to personally acquaint himself with their political systems, social movements, way of life, economic and social progress, and administration of public bodies. He visited Egypt, Greece, Turkey, Soviet Union, Germany, England, Spain, France, and Portugal, staying in Russia for three months. On his return, he altered at Ceylon and returned to India in November 1932. The tour shaped the political ideology of Ramasamy to achieve the social concept of self-respect. 1933 His first wife, Nagamai, died in 1933. Another magazine, Purachi, meaning revolution, was published by Periyar in 1933. Periyar brought out the Tamil weekly Pagutarivu on 12 1934 He wrote and published a book titled as Pen Yen Adimai Anal. Justice Party started the Tamil weekly paper Vidudalai on 0 1 1936 1936 Periyar translated Dr. B. R. Ambedkar's Annihilation of Caste to Tamil. He also supported Ambedkar's demand for separate electorate for scheduled caste. In 1937, 
Chakrabarti Rajagopalachari became the Chief Minister of Madras Presidency and in 1938 introduced Hindi as a compulsory language of study in schools, thereby igniting a series of anti-Hindi agitations. The title Periyar was conferred on him by Tamil Nadu Women Conference held in Madras on 13-11-1938 under the presidency of Neelambikai Ammaya, daughter of Maremalai Adigal, a veteran Tamil scholar. Dr. Dharmambal gave the title of Periya to him. Tamil Nationalist, the Justice Party under Sir A.T. Panirselvam and Ramaswamy organized anti-Hindi protests in 1938, which ended with numerous arrests by the Rajaji government. In 1938, the slogan, Tamil Nadu for Tamilians, was first raised by EVR in protest against introduction of Hindi in schools. 1939 when the Justice Party weakened in the absence of mass support, Ramasamy became the head of the Justice Party after being jailed for opposing Hindi. 1940 On 21st February 1940, Madras Governor Erskine issued a press communique withdrawing compulsory Hindi teaching and making it optional. 1940 A separate conference was held in June 1940 at Kanchipuram when Ramasamy released the map of the proposed Dravida Nadu but failed to get British approval. On the contrary, Ramasamy received sympathy and support from people such as Ambedkar and Muhammad Ali Jinha for his views on the Congress and for his opposition to Hindi. They then decided to convene a moment to risk the Congress. 1944 At a rally in 1944, Ramasamy in his capacity as the leader of the Justice Party declared that the party would henceforth be known as the Dravidar Karagam or Dravidian Association. However, a few who disagreed with Ramasamy started a splinter group claiming to be the original Justice Party. This party was led by veteran Justice Party leader P. T. Rajan and survived until 1957. 1948 When Ramasamy married Mani Amai on 9 July 1948, C.N. Anadurai quit the Dravidyar Kalagam, starting that Ramasamy married Mani Amayar, who was the daughter of Kanagasabai when he was 70 and the age was 32. Though the DMK split from the Dravidyar Kalagam, the organization made efforts to carry on Ramasamy's self respect moment to villages and urban students. 1950. On 22 1 1950, Periyar was sentenced to undergo imprisonment for the publication of book Pon Morigal, Golden Sayings, 1953. In 1953, Ramasamy helped to preserve Madras as the capital of Tamil Nadu, which later was the name he substituted for the more general Dravidanadu. 1954, he visited Burma for attending 2500th birth anniversary of Buddha. 1955. In 1955, Ramasamy threatened to burn the national flag, but on Chief Minister Kamaraj's pledge that Hindi should not be made compulsory, he postponed the action. In 1956, despite warnings from P. Kakan, the President of Tamil Nadu Congress Committee, Ramasamy organized a procession to the marina to burn pictures of Hindu god Rama. Ramasamy was subsequently arrested and confined to prison. 1957 in his speech of 1957 called Sutantra Tamil Nadu Yen, he criticized the central government of India, including thousands of Tamilians, to burn the constitution of India. The reason for this action was that Ramasamy held the government responsible for maintaining the caste system. He closed the speech with a war cry to join and burn the map of India on 5th June. Ramasamy was sentenced to six months imprisonment for burning. Indian Constitution, 1958. The activities of Ramasamy continued when he went to Bangalore in 1958 to participate in All India Official Language Conference. There, he stressed the need to retain English as the Union Official Language instead of Hindi. 1963. Five years later, Ramasamy travelled to North India to advocate the eradication of caste system. In 1970, the Tamil bi-monthly Unmai was first started at Tiruchirapalli by Periyar. Regardless of these measures, a Dravidanadu Suppression Day was observed on 17 September 1960, resulting in numerous arrests. 
Ramasamy resumed his campaign in 1968. He wrote an editorial on Tamil Nadu for Tamilians in which he stated that by nationalism only Brahmins had prospered and nationalism had been developed to abolish the rights of Tamils. 1973 In his last meetings at Tyagarai Nagar Chennai on 19 December 1973 Ramasamy declared a call for action to gain social equality and a dignified way of life. On 24th December 1973, Ramasamy died at the age of 94. His second wife Maniammai continued Ramasamy's social work after his death in 1973 and his ideas then were advocated by Dravidiyar Kharagam. 1974 On Ramasamy's birthday on 17th September 1974 Ramasamy's Rationalist Library and Research Library and Research Institute was opened by then Tamil Nadu Chief Minister M. Karnanithi. 2021 In 2021, the Madurai bench of Madras High Court directed the state government to remove a false information from school and college syllabus that claimed that UNESCO had conferred the title Socrates of Southeast Asia on Periyar. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please like the video and subscribe to our channel.